Okay, so to begin some of the weathering, first we're going to do is get a little piece of sponge um, locked into our tweezer here. And I've got a very thin known mixture of the tire block. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that uh, all into the sponge and we're going to get rid of all of the excess. This might be a little too water down so I might add some more color to it. And all we're really going to do is, this is just going to be the initial pot. So we're just going to get it just slightly touched down on there. And we're just going to get that color slightly discolored there. Just little speckles. And then for this, we're just going to keep this on the greens right now. For the browns, we're going to do something completely different. So we're just going to do this and just blend this all in on these greens. And this is just going to help you get a little bit more variety and the textures of the color here. As it dries, it's going to just give us this little watermark looking type color. So what I'm going to do here is just add a little bit more of that. I'm going to get some of that off of there. Get that all nicely dabbed out. And then we'll want to focus on getting some of this like really just on the top. I'm using the tire block because I want to get just a slight gray tint to it. So you can actually see some of it right here in the gray already starting to you can get a little bit of that onto the orange just to get a little bit of wear into that and then we're going to basically call that done and then for the time what we're going to get in is we're going to go with the dark time spit that around sponge. You can dab that into like that. Get the excess off. And then we just start dabbing that on. And this is just to get some variation in some of the colors going on here. This color is supposed to come up as a dark time. It doesn't seem to fit the bill, but I know it's just really to get textures in here on the black. Get some of it here on some of the green, like right along the top here, so you get a little dusty kind of appearance there. And we're just going to leave that to set for a bit. Then we're going to come in now with a slightly darker color. It's just basically one of the Mission Models armored colors for uh, like a 
dark cocky. This looks more like a cocky drab kind of color. It's actually an olive drab faded is what it's called. But we're just going to use some of that and we're just going to do basically the same thing to get another layer of a slightly different color into it here to just discolor some of this color here. And we just want to do this. Right. So this is just one of the way, different ways you can use even the mission models so you can use it so it kind of works this way almost like a filter type effect but it's just going to be very very grainy. We'll just get the sponge here. Just get all the excess off. You really don't want to flood the surface with it. That's a second layer of coloration on the page. I'm just going to leave that and then we're going to do a second layer on the green next. And a little bit of this RAF dark green and a little touch of black. I just got something in here now we're just going to go over the all the green colors again. With this color here. We're just going to get that in some areas here. And right along inside here where the wing fold is, I'm going to Keep it a little heavier there. some nice light surface standing in there. You don't want it to be too heavy, just a little bit. Work on the blood orange there. And then once we're there, we're there. So we're just going to leave that for a little bit can all get set in and then we'll move on to some of the next stage. Well as you can see here I got some uh, weathering done some of the doors, the bay doors. So we're just going to go ahead. I did all of the SEA ones so they're real severe ones. So we're just going to come in now and do all the navy ones just not as severe. These are pretty much already done. So there's nothing more to do. So we're just going to work pretty much on these four pieces. And what we're going to use is pretty much all of these colored pencils and so on and so forth. So just watch along and see what you think. So we're just going to get a little bit of chipping along this area here only because one is sitting closer to the ground two is kind of angled out a little bit so and it's going to be towards the back so we're just going to chip all of that a bit and we're going to chip along the front here some of the rivets there some minor stuff along there but we're going to chip mostly along the front here like that and you can randomly switch out, uh, you know, we got grays, other grays, and once we're at the end of that, we can get a little bit of gear or streaking coming down here. Going with a little bit of another color here. And 
we'll just call that one done. So as you can see, you can pretty much do that. You know, you gotta kind of think about how you want to deal with it. Um, you know, with something like this, just chip along the front here a little bit. Like I said, this is gonna be the navy one. It doesn't have to really be too badly chipped. It's entirely up to you how severe you want to do it or not. Got a little bit of a angle piece here. What you can do is like up in this area here is use like a brown. You get more of a grease is keeping up and collecting in here kind of a deal here. Just get like that. Going with one of the light up grip browns here. Just get down into here. Kind of a thing. You know, just stuff like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect or fantastic. And then we'll just keep going like that till we got them all done. Using the same approach with crayons and stuff like that, we're gonna do some weathering on these um, flaps here for the for it. So we've got the SEA side, we've got the Navy side. We're going to work mostly on the SEA side. So one of the most common colors to do chipping with is going to be silver. Now you notice so far all I've got here are colored crayons. So we're just going to work around the perimeter of this, bearing in mind that most of the damage is going to be towards the back where the flaps go up and down and things are going to hit them. But you're going to find that with certain things, a lot of these things are really going to be more along the uh, trailing edge. So you want to get the most severe chipping along the green here. You, know, you can get some up here. You just want to work it in to make it look decent. You don't have to go completely overboard on it. What you also have to remember is it's mostly for like you know, the lighter areas when you want to get into the darker chips or the older chips. You want to use a darker color. Using silver on lighter colors is kind of pointless. So go always go with a darker color. So right here what I've got is a 90% cool gray. So you want to just continue this. Right over here you might want to think about this as you know these flaps do bounce around. Sometimes you can see it if you ever flying in a commercial airline you see those flaps extend as the thing is landing. They do just fly around the place quite a lot. So you just want to get into some of these areas with some of that. A pair of gloves are a good thing to consider because I tell you doing it on these things with the crayons that do wipe off quite a bit. Now if I had a complaint anywhere here about this mission model paint is is that the glossier surface makes it hard. Well I shouldn't say glossy because they're kind of like a semi-gloss finish. It makes get the crayons to mark the surface a little bit harder and you run the risk of actually damaging the paint. So I got my glove on so I won't get any more fingerprints. And you can just graduate in with um, other colors here. You just want to get some of these colors in. You know, fresher scratches or slightly older scratches are going to be like that. You can come in with some of the this to show where it's gone down to the primer coat, I guess if you want to call it. All along here, you want to get some of that. Keep down into the rivet areas. Another thing you can use on some of these darker colors like green and stuff is you can use gray. If you want to get something that's going to look more like a fresher type scratch. Because a lot of the times if you really look at scratch metal, most of the time what you're really scratching is any kind of a clear coat on the surface. And I usually leaves more of a grayish mark than anything else. You 
you don't have to go too crazy on it. That should be good enough. If you want, you can flip that over, get into it with the grays, and you can get the same type of thing here. Just randomly dip dab it. You know. Different colors here. Get the heavy chipping along the edge here. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. And then, you, like I said, you can do the same thing with a navy one. You don't necessarily have to do a lot more, just focus on certain areas. And like I said, maybe side we won't make it too severe. So I think we pretty much got that going. You can see I already did some of it onto this here and on the bottom here. And we can get to the navy one over here. Like I said, just pick a spot and just start working it. It's white. And we'll just stop right there for right now. Okay, for the next part of weathering, we're going to actually get into using some enamels. So we're going to focus right now on these parts. So we're going to focus strictly on the tail wings here in the camel parts and on the elevators here. So let's get these over there like that and that's it. So I'm going to use some of these enamels here for that. So what I've got here is a MIG streaking grime, streak, streaking grime for DAC, uh, light dust, dark streaking grime and tracks wash. Well, even though it says tracks wash, doesn't really matter. They're all pretty much good for using on this sort of stuff. So I'm going to start with the tracks wash first on the SEA side. So we're just going to put just some dots. It's just really a modeling type effect we're going for here. And then we'll go to this one here. And we'll just keep cutting, just randomly dot. And then we're going to get into this now with some of the streaking grime. And now for this, I'm going to focus on getting this pretty much in the brown areas into some of this. Actually, you can pretty much go all over. It's a similar color to the one we just used, just not as dark. And then we can get the dark streaking grime, and then we can use that on this as well. And this is going to be a really, really dark greenish color, so I want to focus this just in the green areas here. You just want small dots. And then there's that, this one here. So we're just going to do the same thing, same pretty much idea. Get some 
stuff there. Going in the middle there. And then we'll just leave that. And what you want to do is leave this to sort of dry for a little bit. And then we'll come back to blending that. Okay, this stuff doesn't take very long to dry, nor does it take very long to get to where we need it to. So, I'm just going to get a basic brush, nice round tip, going to get it into a little bit of the thinner, or white spirit. And we're just going to get as much of it out here because you don't want it like dripping wet with this thing. And then we're just going to slowly blend this all in. Just blending it in very, very carefully, very slowly. And what you want to do is kind of turn all those dots into other little dots. And just keep blending them all in. Just like that. If you blend them all the way out, don't worry about it. These things have this tendency that when you think they're completely gone and they dry, they actually show right back up again. So you just want to get it fairly well blended in. Pretty much like that till they're all pretty much just smudges. So we'll just uh, leave that there up in the top view there. And then we'll do the same thing with this. Again, same principle. I'm just gonna blend them in slightly. You don't you just about don't even want to completely kill it. And we'll do the same thing here with the other one here. Just blend in, blend in, blend in, blend in. You can get up there too. You just want to basically, you're just basically spreading it around a little bit. Okay, and once you got it to that point, what you're going to want next is another brush, something that's probably really battered like this and you can just get some of the thinner on it just a little lid because you really don't want it to be anything too much then you're going to come back over with much of this with this one here and you just want to come back over it again and you're going to blend it some more back here you can see you know with this one here especially so it's just gonna be very 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 subtle on it here you're almost taking it all off like that with this because now what you're just doing is just refining these spaces and making them even thinner so once you get to that spot, your final stage with this would be to get something, though, no, that's a slightly bigger round tip brush. And it's got to be pretty soft, even something like this. Um, I usually have a blending brush specifically for this stage, but I can't seem to find it. Because I am a disorganized little crap hole right now. So, but yeah. So what you want is a brush like this and then you're going to come back over this and then you're going to really just start to blend it in i guess at this one here you just want it to be a little cleaner because of that because this is going to be a much cleaner side, so we're not going to get keep it that much dirty. 
And that I think we're going to be good with on this for now. Okay, so we're going to start some of the weathering here on this. And for starters, we're going to start with um, probably one of the most recognized weathering patterns on uh, military aircraft. And that is the corrosion treatment. So I've got some dark tan in here. I'm going to start doing some of some of these tan areas first. Then we're going to mix up some uh, dark green with some black or some native green with some black. And then we're going to get onto the black spots. So first thing I did, I got it nicely set up and we're going to take the cap off. Great thing about some airbrushes when I do this, because this does allow you to do some very, very fine, fine lines. You know, you can see there. But you want to keep the look pressure also low. So, take this and dock it up on its side a little bit. And then I'm going to focus on like these areas here. In some cases, a lot of these things, they weren't exactly painted with the exact color. So we're going to do something a little different here with this that's going to offset that. Okay, so we got those there. some up here on the uh, on the vertical stabilizer here this is just going to represent areas where the paint might have chipped and they really they touched it up a little bit you know just to prevent it from rusting So I think we're going to probably just stop there. We don't want to get too overboned with it. And get some here on the wing. And I'm just going to do that so we can get a nice big area here. Just right on the tip of this. And you don't even have to follow a panel line. It could be that they had to, you know, do something just right there in the middle of nothing. Could be in the middle of the rivets, it could be like a square piece like that. A piece there. And there. And we got another spot like right in here that you know, may have gotten some damage but it's got a little touch up. So we're going to leave that as that. Okay, the next part of this that we're going to get to is to do the actual color correction. So what we're doing here is two effects. We're creating the corrosion treatment effect. And we're going to also 
in a second half of it create what would be an overspray effect. Now a lot of people tend to look at overspray and they coin it wrong. Uh, you know, overspray is like if you're spraying here and then you get it on the green. Yeah, it kind of is, but it really isn't. What overspray technically really is, is if you're spraying in an area and you've applied too much paint and there's a certain misting around the area that you're spraying. So if you're spraying like in this spot, there's going to be a little bit, you know, around it in a halo kind of thing. That technically is really what overspray is. Uh, what ends up happening with that is, is that when the paint dries and it gets exposed to elements and stuff like that, you'll get this very dark uh, halo effect around it. Uh, so if you look at a lot of these uh, aircrafts that have had this touch up, you'll notice the middle part of it is nice and clean, but around it's kind of dirty and black. That is where the actual overspray problem comes in. So once you've got this, so it's always best when you're doing these types of effects to kind of spray a little wider than you actually want them because then you're going to come back in. So this is the original color mixed in with a little bit of red on time because I want it to look lighter and have a much fresher look. to spray that on in the area here and almost completely cover what you did before. And then what you get is uh, that type of um, result. Yeah, it looks a little heavy, it looks a little over the top, but you know what? The next of our uh, weathering stages is going to take care of that. And you can even take this and you can go and add some more areas of touch up here. Just, you know, add some more player to what's going on here. You just add some more extra crap to it. And yeah, it does take a bit of a steady hand, but don't worry about it. Nothing ever gets put on right in real life either, so. What you gotta think about is, is when you're thinking about the fact that there's a guy spraying this, I mean, you gotta think of the fact that compared to this, you know, take a model figure and place his hand next to it, to your, to your, to your model, and imagine him holding a spray gun spraying these spots. That's the type of effect you want to go for. So it's gotta be tiny, it's gotta be there, it's gotta look like somebody sprayed it with a very small spray gun. If you can get that done, then yep, you're about 80% there with this effect. to go a little crazy with it too. Because yes it was a jet, but I mean you're dealing with something that was operating in a country that was at the time predominantly jungle. we did here. And we'll go back to this one here. Just get that 
Okay, so now we've gotten all of that done. So you can see here the green, some of it, it was basically native green mixed with black. So two parts native green, one part black. And then I just sprayed that on randomly. As you can see some parts of it, I did come back over with the original medium green and um, do some of these areas here and back in here and like on the wings here. And then some of it I just left with the NATO black uh, black mix. You can see here, some of it you, I purposely didn't cover a whole lot of it, but at least you get an idea. So that's it. So we're gonna let this sit for a bit and then we're gonna come and start and do the Navy side. There won't be a lot for the Navy side. I'm just gonna do some of the very common, typical stuff that you normally see uh, where Navy ones are concerned. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the second stage of um, weathering. And we're going to be looking at chipping. So there's going to be several different styles of chipping being done on this. This part here in the first we're going to do sponge chipping. So we're going to use some zinc chromate green to get some chipping along the leading edge of the wings. Around here. Maybe a couple spots back there. And definitely on the intakes here. So. Let's go to tone on that. So we're going to dip the sponge in. I'm going to knock off the excess until we get, you know, a pattern we like. And then we're just going to dab it on. Just get all of that on there, just like that. Okay, maybe I cleaned up a little too much before. And once we've got what we think we need, then we can stop there. Then the next stage, we're going to use some MIG chipping color to get darker and older chips. And these I'm just going to leave it coming down to the leading edge of the wing. I'm just going to mix that in there. Just to get some different colors. And the leading edge here. Get some there along the back. And these flapped areas here. You know, that sort of stuff like that. And then the final color for the chipping round is going to be some Vallejo Bottle Air Aluminum. And it's pretty much going to be the same approach. Now this I might go a little bit more on. So we can just get like onto this. Just slightly touch, slightly touch, you know, slightly touch there on the tip. We just want to keep everything very subtle here. And along this here, we'll just get some color into that. And we're just going to mix them all up a little bit here. Where I want to be good on this is, so we're just going to get a little bit along the edge here. I get too much pain in that. Just touch, touch. This is to get mostly very generalized chipping done on it here. Uh, stop where we think 
think we're satisfied with it. The next kind of chipping we could do is back to the pencil. So we're going to just come in and clean up and dress up some of this stuff here. Just a little bit at a time. Like I said, this one here is going to be pretty chip. So right now I'm just going with a silver. And we're just going to keep going here. Until I'm happy with what I got. Just really a bunch of little tots and ashes and stuff like that and little squiggles and get into here. All we're gonna do is just that. But I'm gonna keep most of it. Oops, I'm gonna put my camera out. I'm gonna pretty much keep most of it here to the front of the aircraft. Get into some of this olive green crayon here. Just want to work it in. And like I said, this side is really going to get. Yeah, we can go in with some dark umber, get some nice browns in there as well. And we start working into some of these areas here. Some browns into like here. And we get into this kind of an area here. Now this is, wouldn't be for chipping, this is more for like staining. And like I said, we're just going to focus here on the front of the aircraft, only because it's easier to show it. This is where the majority of it's going to go. There's a darker gray, you know, getting closer into the blocks. I'll go back in, like I said, you know, you can flip flop between the, all the colors. And you get pilots getting in and out, chipping the hell out of it here. And then you can get some of it into this here. And then when you get finished with that, you know, you can get into coming into like with some of the lighter colors. Because remember, for darker colors, you want lighter chips. Lighter colors, you want darker chips. So you can come in with something like this. You know, you can just go on and on and on if you want, or you can pretty much stop there. Uh, you know, you can get into some of the grays. You can get a little touch into some of the black here on the front. I wouldn't do too much of it here. Uh, we did do a little bit of sponge chipping on here, but the most thing you want to try to do here with stuff like this now is just to kind of like blend the sponge chipping in a little bit better.
and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to stop here with this and then we're going to play around with this some more and get the rest of the aircraft on this side here and then we'll come back. Okay, continuing from where we last left off, now we're going to start some um, oil and enamel weathering. We're going to start from the front and work our way back. Uh, as you can see, I just did a little bit of minor stuff on the uh, Navy side. I didn't want to do too much on that. Because like I said, the intention is to have that side be pretty clean. So, we're going to go with some of the MIG products. And only solely for the color, I'm going with the Earth Tone color. Only because I want a little bit of a tan color blended into this. And then we're going to get a little bit of gray into that as well. We just want to get it kind of like a older look kind of thing here. Get a bit more of it down into here. Have the dirt tones more into the bottom here. And then we're just going to blend that in. So we're going to let that sit for a second. And then we'll start blending that in. Okay, so after we've left it for a bit, we're going to come in and start blending this all out. So we just want to get it lightly blurred into the surface. What you want to do is just blend it so it looks like little little tiny streakings and down here we want to just blend this all the way into the corner like that but then what i want to do here also is once i get this blended a little bit let's just blend that some more this is streaked out up like that get a little streaking effect like this like it's just there's just running down and then pooling in the bottom here and then we're just gonna leave that to set for a while and then what we can do is we go on the other side and we'll do the uh, Navy side so we'll just leave this for a little bit and let that cure up a little bit more And on the navy side, we're just going to come in with a little bit of a dark wash and just adding it all with a very fine brush because we just want to get it a little bit of a speckled color here. Don't want to get too far into it. And we'll just do some of the same thing down here. Get some of this darker color down into here just to get that. Actually, I'm going to hit on this a little sooner than I wanted to because I want this to be, like I said, very, very mild in its effect. Like I said, bearing in mind the fact that once, you know, you get some of this off and it starts to dry, a lot of it's just going to come back. But this I really want subtle, so I want to get much of it moved off. Like no while it's still there. And we'll just do the same thing down in here we did with the other side. We'll move this up like that first. And then we'll just leave it like that. 
Like I said, I just want it to be subtle on the navy one. I don't want to overkill it. I want it to be milder. And I think that's basically what we're going to stop with right there. So you can just see a little bit of streaking there. And we'll just leave it at that. There's the other side. That's looking a little bit... Or we can just do that and just feather it a little bit more. And then that'll be the other side. So we'll leave that. And then like I said, we're going to move over into this side in the next section. Okay, so the next stage we're going to get into this weathering is we've got some oils here. So we've got lamp black, olive green, and raw umber. So we're going to use this to get some staining going on here. So the raw umber is going to be pretty much mostly the stain, the bronze. Black's going to be for general staining, and the olive green, sorry, which is over here, is going to be to do some selective weathering on mostly the greens. So we're just going to basically do that. We'll get the brush just dampened slightly. Paper towel here. And we're going to dry it out. Now we're just going to add, so we'll start with the olive green. And we just want to do this just to stain. Now I've seen a couple of pictures where this particular panel just seems to be a completely different shade from anything else. You just want to work it into areas you want to get darkened up. flaps and stuff like this. Here we go. Well, actually these are aerolons, so we want to get that there. You can get a little bit in here to darken that up. And we just, just want some general area coverage. Just to get some dark. No, I don't mind doing it on here because what you really want to do is you don't want all the silver just showing plain up like that. Uh, so let's get some into here. All up into this thing here. And then we'll just do that there. Get some there. Get some in this root here. We want to get up into like the wing here. So what I want to do here is I want to keep it like in this joint here. And then just get some general staining like that. And let's get some over here, some here. And just basically like that. So we can clean up the brush here. And then we can go from there. And then we step in and start blending these colors all in. So same as we did with the front. Same as we did with the tail wings. The horizontal stabilizer. Same as we did with everything else. We're just going to stamp these colors in. So, we'll start here, like I said, at the front. Get that out of the way. And then we'll just start blending these colors in. There we go. Just want to blend some of this in. Just to add even that much more variation to the surface colors. This is not the end of it. There's still more to come. Start blending some more. Do this, make it look like rain streak stone. Same with this. Just blend that all in, like that. Just leave them in things. You know? Want to make 
that a little bit dirty there. You got a lot of grease and a lot of stuff and staining that's going to go on in there. So you want to just keep that like that. Now I'll come back in and add a little bit of black for that. And you want to come in and add a little shadow here around the flap. Just make it a little darker than the rest. And I might have to come in to that with, shoot, where is my flat brush? Maybe one of these. get a bit of a color change demarcation from here just to darken this piece here just so that it looks different from the rest of the tail and just add some more interest there again and then you can just spread it and spread it and just keep tapering it out And what you'll get is a slightly different shade of green from the rest there. And that's it. And then I want to focus on this area here. So what I want to do is, is just spread this around. So it's more like a filter in this area here. Staying away from these circles. I'm going to leave that to let that dry just a little bit because of what I'm trying to go for there. And then we'll just go ahead and do the same thing with the bronze. This heavier brown on this is actually probably wasn't the best thing to do because it is going to be a real pain cleaning up. Start over here. Some cleaning for on this. Get all of that. And start blending some of this out. Now what I've got here is this brown is a little too strong for that. So what I probably have to do here is get my sponge here. Tweezer, and then I'm just gonna have to get some of it up. I think it's just like a little too heavy here. some of this up because it's like way too heavy I like along that line I don't mind that and in here that's gonna be way too heavy so we just want to get some of that up so what I might do here is just get the sponge in the thinner a bit and help clean up some of this extra stuff. That way the sponge will help soak it up a lot faster. All right. I think 
like I'm getting a little closer to where I want. So let me just get some of this cleaned up and do pretty much the same thing we did with the green and then we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so a lot of that had to be done off camera because it was really an intense amount of cleanup to do. So I've got it to a point now where it's pretty much done. So we're just going to blend all of this in to soften it. We're just going to use, uh, you know, one of these types of brushes. So something with a little rounded end. And then we're just going to come in and we're just going to soften much of that. Because we don't want it to be like really super heavy like it is right now. Especially with the brown. So we're just going to soften that up a little bit with this. Yeah, we just want to get it a little softer. Just so it looks a little softer, a little subtler. Just like that. And that is pretty much that. Now with this part you can blend it down and make it as subtle as you want or leave it as intense as you want. So up in here where we had the other color there, I'm just going to blend that a little bit just so that we get that olive color up there a little bit, which seems to have kind of died down a bit. So I'm just going to, and I'm thinking that is from me handling it, probably rubbed off some of it. So that's pretty much where we're at with that. And then we're going to finish that up, let this set, seal it all in, then we'll do the navy side.
leave it at that.
Thank you.